Again, welcome to Inferential Statistics in Decision Making. This lecture covers chapter one of our course textbook and is the second lecture for the course. In this lecture, we're going to discuss data classification. So um, our main objective is to discuss the difference between qualitative and quantitative data. Also, we are going to classify data based on the four levels of measurements that we use again for variables. So we start with the qualitative data. Here we see a qualitative data consists of attributes, the labels, and non-numerical entries. So this means we cannot perform an arithmetic operations or mathematical computations on qualitative data. Example can be a major, the place of birth, New York, the your eye color, blue, yellow, etc. Now a quantitative data will be a numerical measurement or count. So it's a values based on counting or measurements. Example can be an age, the weight of a letter or a temperature. So this is example which you classify the data either it's a qualitative or quantitative. So in this table, we have a model. These models are the names of the vehicles. And also we have the base price. Those are the price of the vehicles. So the models are named, so that will be qualitative. And the price, again, is a value, so that will be quantitative. So we, here we say the models are qualitative data because they are the names of the vehicles and they are non-numerical entries. Quantitative data, that's the base price of a vehicle model, so they are numerical entries, so they are quantitative. Next, we discuss about the level of measurements. The first one will be the nominal level of measurement. A nominal level of me measurement is only a qualitative data. They are only a qualitative data. So example will be names, labels, or qualities. There is no mathematical computations or arithmetic operations cannot be performed. So example of a nominal level of measurement can be the color of my eyes, or it can be my name, Etc. or city name, etc. The next one is the ordinal level of measurements. Now, ordinal level of measurement is based on order. So, for example, we have medium, extra large, large, strong, not too strong, etc. So, something in order. So, in this case, it can be qualitative or quantitative data. So, example can be medium, large, extra large. That's qualitative. First, second, third, that's quantitative. Also, data can be arranged in order. That's the main goal here. Ordinal levels are the data always in order. Now, differences between data entries is not meaningful because they are in order, so it's not meaningful. So let's see an example here. We should classify data by, le by level. Then we have two sets of data. The first data set we have is the top five TV programs. So this is in order, the top five, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. So that will be ordinal level. We list the rank of five TV programs. Data can be in order or the, the data is ordered. Now the differences between the ranks is not meaningful. Here we have a network affiliate in Pittsburgh. So this will be nominal data because they are the names. So this is the list call letters of each network affiliates. So that would be a nominal data or nominal level. Next is the interval level of measurements. Now with the interval level of measurement, it can be only a quantitative data. Uh, so the data also can be put in order, but the difference between the data entries is meaningful. Now we know in the ordinal level of measurement, the difference between the data is not meaningful. And one thing we should know in the interval level of measurement, zero represents something. So interval level of measurement is good for scaling. Uh, for example, temperature of a city is zero. Zero means it's very cold. But uh, my bank account balance is zero. It means I don't have no money. So bank account balance will be ratio. So the ratio level of measurement is similar to interval level is quantitative, but zero entry 
is means none, nothing. And also a ratio of two data values can be formed. We can divide one value by another. And also one data value can be expressed as a multiple of another. So in this example, again, is classified data by level. Here we have a New York Yankee World Series victories. And they gave us the years from 1923 to 2000. Then we have 2003 National League home run total by team. So again, since the New York Yankees uh, World Series victories is only years, this will be interval level. We cannot do a multiplier of it. So here we said the quantitative data because it's here it's a quantitative data, but we can also find a difference between two dates, but we cannot do a ratio. Uh, we can do a ratio, but it doesn't make no sense to say the ratio of 1950 and 1958. But the difference of 1950 and 1958, we say is eight years difference. Since we cannot do a ratio to make sense, it will be, again, interval level. Only the ratio level, we can do multiplication, ratios, etc. So we can find the differences, and also we can write the ratio. Uh, let's say bottom more is 164. I can say, okay, 164 by the total. That will give me the proportion of bottom, but, uh, Baltimore. So Baltimore divided by the total for the cities. So in summary of the four levels of measurement, we say with nomina, we can put data in categories but we cannot arrange data in order. So in nominal data, the data cannot be in order. Also, we cannot do any arithmetic operation. So we cannot do a subtraction or a ratio or multiplication. With ordinary data, we can put the data in categories because we say ordinary data. Also, we can arrange the data in order. That is the main key of ordinary data. But we cannot do a subtraction or a multiple ratio. Now with interval, we can do subtraction. Uh, remember example they gave us the in New York Yankee 1958, they won the World Series, 1952, they won it. The difference from 1952, uh, 1952 and 1950, so it's six years difference. So they waited for another six years before they win again. So this will be meaningful if I do a differences in interval data. But I can do ratio. Then with the ratio, we can do everything. We can put data in categories. We can arrange the data in order. We can subtract. And we can also find the ratio of multiple of another. So in this lectures, again, we cover the concept of, again, qualitative data and quantitative data. And we do our data classification based on the four levels of measurements. So again, see you in the next class. Thank you.